Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this service of worship. It is good to be together. Uh, glad to be with those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those of you who are worshiping with us online. Welcome all. Invite those of you who are here in the room to find the, the burgundy uh, welcome pads at the end of each row and sign in, pass them down, and then pass them back so you know who your neighbors are in worship today. And those of you who are online, I invite you to share a greeting in the comments so we know who you are too and who's worshiping with us uh, remotely this morning. I will share a couple of announcements. First of all, thank you for some uh, much needed R&R &R, uh, time away last week following our uh, beautiful week at Lutheran Camp Formation. And uh, rather than um, make up a sermon as I go today, I am grateful to yield the pulpit to, uh, to Pat Reed this morning. She is a uh, uh, a pastor, a member of All Saints Congregation here, and uh, a transition coach with the Grand Canyon Synod. So please to welcome Pat to the, the pulpit today. Thank you so much. And thank you to Summer Nelson for filling in at the piano today. It is so much fun in the summer that we get to welcome a variety of gifts, even in our, our comings and goings. So um, appreciate all the the, the deep bench we have here at All Saints. Um, I, you probably know more about what's going on here than I do, but I will, I will share what I've read in the bulletin. Today is the last Sunday for the back to school supply drive in support of uh, Lutheran Social Ministries. And so if you have um, items that you've uh, collected for that, there are containers out at the, both entrances, I believe, and also downstairs by the office uh, for, this, for the school supplies. Um, so please get those turned in today if you have them. God is good. Let us stand and begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness as printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us make confession in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 765.
Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, Colossians, Colossians 1, verse 15 through 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed every creature un under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he who we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Word of God, word of life. stand.
who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Do I have any children that want to come up and speak with me this morning? Brave? Yes? No? Oh, here they come. Okay. I think I can sit, right? Oh, maybe I can. <laughs> so today's Bible reading is about two sisters, Mary and Martha. Now, I have a sister, and I have two daughters, and one of my daughters has two daughters. How many of you have a sister? Huh? How many of you, you're his sister, and how many of you have a brother? And how many of you just are so happy with your brother or sister all the time? <laughs> Really? This is church. It's a church. Absolutely no. I, you know, I love, you are good. Good for you. Yeah, you love to wrestle with him. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I really love my sister, but she and I are very different. And there are times when I just don't, I need to separate. And there are times when we were growing up when my mom would say, my sister was doing everything good, and I felt like I wasn't. And there were times when I was doing everything good because I really was a perfect child. How many of you are perfect children, huh? Any? Yeah, good, right? Right, being a perfect child doesn't mean you have to be perfect, so that's good news. But my mother, you know, she loved us both the same, right? She loved us even with our differences, especially because of our differences. And she never stopped loving us no matter what we did. And today it's the same with God. You know that, right? You know that Jesus loves you, whether you're as good as your brother or sister or whether you're not quite as good as your brother or sister, it doesn't matter to God. In God's eyes, you're all perfect children. So let's give thanks for that this day. Would you pray with me? Dear God, okay, everybody, dear God, thank you for loving us just as we are. Help us to trust your love so that we might live happily with one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you for coming up. I am a retired pastor. It's been a long time since I did that. Um, it is a pleasure to be here today. Um, as Pastor Kristen mentioned, I work for the Office of the Bishop. I am a transition coach, and I work with congregations who are seeking to call new pastors or deacons, and I help them guide them through the call process. And as a member of the bishop staff, I'd like to bring greetings from our bishop, who cares very much for all of you and is thankful for our partnership that we are church together. Um, we have two assistants to the bishop, Pastor Jackie Pagel and Pastor Miguel Gomez Acosta, who um, also support and are thankful for your support of the ministries. And I noticed today my colleague, Solveig Moose, is here. Solveig works for Lutheran Advocacy Ministry in Arizona. So if you have questions about advocacy, I know she'd like to talk to you. So Solveig, good to see you. And then again, thank you, Pastor Kristen, for allowing me to preach. Would you pray with me? Living God, we give you thanks that the fullness of your glory was pleased to dwell in Jesus Christ. By the power of your Holy Spirit, draw us to dwell with him 
that we might know the joy of loving and serving you and our neighbors. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you already know that I'm Pat, but I'm also a recovering Martha. What about you? Do we have any Marthas here or maybe Martins? <laughs> Are you, like me, unable to hear today's well-known story from Luke's Gospel without being at least a little bit resentful because if you don't do it, who's going to do it? Or are you like me also convicted each time you hear this story by the distractions that seem so important, keep you busier than you want to be, and steal time that might be better spent sitting at the feet of Jesus and contemplating God's word? Maybe, however, you're a Mary or a Mark, comfortable letting others do the work while you sit and commune with God and nature. Did you hear the judgment in that? <laughs> it's spoken by a true Martha. I do wonder sometimes what it would be like to be Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, silently soaking it in, not distracted by the demands of the day. I can only dream. Luke's story of sibling rivalry can easily divide us into Marthas and Marys, Martins and Marks, doers and dreamers, but that's not Luke's intent. Today's reading goes back to Jesus' encounter with that young lawyer we heard last Sunday. The lawyer wanted to ensure he knew God's will so he could do what was necessary to receive God's eternal favor. Jesus, being Jesus, led him to answer his own question with what we know as the great commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Being a follower of Jesus is not an either or proposition, but a both and invitation. Luke wants us to know that. Jesus wants us to know that. There needs to be room in each of our lives and in our communal life together for Mary time and Martha time, for serving and doing, and for prayer and study. Now, I've been worshiping with you long ago enough that I suspect that you all know that. But for many of us, Balance is hard to come by, isn't it? It's easier said than done, especially when there are so many demands and distractions out there pressing in on us. Martha thought she knew what was important when Jesus and his disciples showed up at her home. She was gracious in opening that home and immediately began preparing a meal for Jesus and his disciples. She was doing what was expected of her. Her sister Mary was not. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, Mary was not only ignoring her sister and the work that needed to be done, she was also ignoring the expectations of her culture. Only men sat at the feet of teachers and listened. Not only was Martha mad at Mary for not helping her, she was also upset that Mary wasn't doing what she was supposed to do. What would people, what would Jesus think? Surely there would be time later after all the work was done for her and Mary to spend quality time with her friend Jesus. Why did Mary have to defy expectations 
especially when there was so much to do. Expectations are powerful forces in our lives. Expectations can motivate us to be better, can set clear boundaries, but they can also become obstacles to our emotional, spiritual, and intellectual growth. Expectations are often rooted in tradition. Women cook, men take out the garbage. <laughs> they can also be rooted in your own mind. I'm not good or smart enough to do that the way they want it done or rooted in the opinion of others. You'll look foolish if you try that. Think about it. Think about it this week. What are the expectations that rule your life? Do they fit who you are? Or do they feel a little bit confining? Expectations can be hard obstacles to overcome which is why we need to take time to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to where God is leading, to listen to whether it's time to say yes or no to that next service opportunity. In today's reading, Martha thinks she's being loving by doing what's expected of her and waiting on her guests. But it's Mary who Jesus points to as the one who has chosen the better part. That shouldn't surprise us. Jesus is always challenging expectations. He sees that it's Mary who shows love for him by listening to what he has to say. In that moment, Mary understands that being loving isn't about meeting someone's expectations, isn't about doing what's expected, but about being open to receive all that Jesus brings. So think about that too this week. What might it mean in your life that loving God is not just about being a giver? It's also about intentionally taking the time to receive with love what God is offering you. How often do you take time to receive? If you're like me, a recovering Martha, not often enough. Martha is so busy trying to meet what she thinks are the needs of Jesus that she's in danger of losing her better self. No doubt, on most days, Martha enjoys being a hostess. The Marthas and the Martins I know enjoy being busy most of the time. But on this day, Martha was anxious about what wasn't getting done and angry about the help she wasn't getting from her sister. Some days are like that. But in letting Mary's choice get to her, she closed herself off, not only from God, but also from her sister. She lost the joy that God love brings. It wasn't that Jesus and the others didn't need to be fed, didn't want to eat, but that Martha, in her anxiety, had lost the joy of serving. And that loss turned into a chore that poisoned her spirit and her relationship with Mary. In praising Mary's openness, her willingness to sit at his feet and listen, Jesus is inviting us to put aside the demands and distractions that so often claim us and take us away from God. Jesus is inviting us to spend time with God, to feel God's love for us, and listen for where God is leading us to serve. It might not be what you expect, 
but it will be life-giving. For recovering Marthas and Martins, it's not easy to step back, wait, and listen in the midst of all the needs of life today. But it's a gift you're invited to receive. I worked on this this week. It may be counterintuitive, but it's immeasurably easier to do what needs to be done when you put aside your distractions and sit at the feet of Jesus first. That's where you're reminded that you already have God's eternal favor. There's nothing you have to do. You are forever loved by God. No one can take that from you. Neither can you lose it. But sometimes it gets buried, buried under the expectations, demands, and distractions in our lives. Today is your reminder to take time to receive with love God's love for you. It's an invitation to take time to listen to God's word. Listen to Jesus speaking to you personally. Jesus' words to Martha may sound harsh, but they set her free. She was anxious about things that didn't matter. She still held herself back from Jesus in order to serve Jesus, but Jesus invited her to receive his love and God's favor first. He does the same for you and for me. In the church, at the table, in our homes, Jesus receives us and loves us without condition. He feeds us and forgives our sins and failures through the bread and the wine. He also listens and receives with love what we offer, no matter how far from expectations it may seem. He blesses us and sends us out to help our neighbors in need, sometimes in ways we never imagined. Jesus challenges us to move past the expectations that hold us back and promises to have our back when we, like Mary, choose the better part. Take some Mary time this week. Sit with Jesus. Allow Jesus to bless your Martha time by engaging in Mary time. And if you're already a Mary or a Mark, have some compassion for your busy sisters and brothers in Christ. They, we, need your encouragement, support, and yes, help. We are in this together. We are church together. The good news is that whether you find the time to sit with Jesus or not, he is still with you. God's not going anywhere. God continues to show up at your door, your table, your life. God never tires, ever, of inviting you to receive with love and give with joy in Jesus' name. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand to sing together hymn number 808.
People of God, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died, and was buried. He descended on the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Ever-present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. Hear us, O God. Through Christ, you reconcile all things, motivate those in power to, invent, to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind in the spirit of Bartolome de las Casas, whom we commemorate today, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous people. Hear us, O God. Through Christ you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Smooth those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers, especially Don Noller, George Humphrey, Johnny Edwards, Daryl Mueller, Philip and Julie Livinggood, Carol Johnson, Patricia Janice, Stephen, and Shelby Harders, John Weaver. Hear us, O God. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire, inspire these worship, worshiping community, All Saints Lutheran Church, to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. Hear us, O God. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table, especially Reverend Howard Wenis, first bishop of the Grand Canyon Synod, who died on July 12th. May those who grieve find comfort in your promise to gather us together in your eternal glory. Hear us, O God. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbors in worship.
Let us worship God with the receiving of our morning offering. Alarm clock screaming there, feet hit the floor. It's off to the races, everybody at the door. Feeling like I'm falling behind, it's a crazy life. 90 miles an hour, going fast as I can. Trying to push a little harder, trying to make the upper hand. So much to do in so little time, it's a crazy life. It's ready, set, go, it's another wild day. Stress is on the rise in my heart. I hear you say, Just breathe, just breathe. Come and rest at my feet and be just be. Chaos calls when all you really need is to just. I wonder if there's something more to this crazy life. I'm busy, 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 and it's no surprise to see that I only have time for me, me, me. There's got to be something more to this crazy life. I'm hanging on tight to another wild day when the stars will fall apart in my heart. I hear you say, just breathe, just Come and rest at my feet and be just be chaos calls and all you really need is to take it The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Please be seated. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all who trust in him to share the feast that he has prepared. If you are visiting with us this morning, please feel welcome to join us in this sacrament. And if you are worshiping with us online, please feel free to gather elements so that you may commune with us as well. Uh, as, you, uh, uh, as we commune this morning, you'll be invited to come forward to communion stations near the front. Uh, at, at, both sta at all stations, uh, gluten-free wafers will be available, and both wine and grape juice are here as well. If you prefer to commune in the pew, uh, pre-sealed uh, cups and, and wafers with communion elements are available at both entrances. So do as you feel comfortable doing. After uh, you have received the elements, whether in, your, in the pews or uh, or up front, the altar rail is open as a space of prayer this morning for all who wish to take some time to pray. And if you would like Pastor Pat or myself to pray with you, uh, just give us a nod. We'd be honored to do so. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
hymn 483. Here is Brad. Please. 
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 543, Go, My Children, With My Blessing. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.